where we go on the on the web, what we're looking for when we're analyzing cryptocurrency organizations. Got a bunch of tabs here as well that we can just go through looking at resources, where we get information, what information we're looking for. Pretty much um, my background is VC investing and VC valuations. So looking at very high level valuations um, at scale, we're looking to see what type of TAM they can grow into or total addressable market. Um, you can do a top-down approach from a TAM. You can do a bottom-up if we wanted to estimate, um, you know, product or service per unit economies um, and look at revenue and expenses there. So pretty much we'll be looking at comparables as well. Um, please do chat in the chat function because that's kind of the only way that I can see you're in here right now. This is stream number one, so we'll get better. But pretty much when I wake up in the morning, I'm trying to be proactive. Um, so I don't really always go straight to CoinGecko and start to look at charts and start to look at prices. Sometimes I just don't even want that to impact my emotional state at the moment. Um, so what I typically do, and you can get a pretty good grasp of the market, is you go to Twitter. Um, if you're researching crypto organizations, um, Twitter was just a much, they call it crypto Twitter, they call it CT, um, and it's just simply a must-have. Hopefully that's, there we go. Um, and it's just simply a must-have when it comes to research. So oftentimes you can find yourself endlessly scrolling, but other times you can find some gems of information that you start on Twitter, and then you go down a rabbit hole that takes you to other websites, other resources, um, and typically ends up in Discord as well. Um, Dog Toshi, great person to follow. Um, since Kirby is gone and Andre has taken a break from social media, who do we blame for LBI? LBI, see, I'm not quite sure what LBI is. Um, if you want me to have a quick look at LBI, we can do that in a little bit. Um, let me know in the chat. What's going on in DeFi land today? Um, actually, I want to check these out. You always got to check out what's what charts they're looking at. This looks like LBI. LBI is the big all in LBI. Andre can do no wrong. All right, that's the big news in crypto today. And as you can see, it looks like LBI just today has dropped off a ch dropped off. Uh, they're on chart. Let's see if it's on Coin Gecko. So this is a perfect example of where crypto Twitter, I'll try to move a bit slowly because my computer is slow. This is a perfect example of where crypto Twitter is just um, invaluable. When we drop in here, I've never heard of LBI before. Um, and now we've got a new token, new organization that we can have a look at. LBI, it's not on CoinGecko yet. Um, so we'd actually have to check this Twitter you can all be looking in Twitter and you want to just simply find all of the information you can on one coin. Simply type cash tag and then your um, your cash tag symbol here. So I've got cash tag LBI here. Um, and then it gives me all of the tweets um, that, that have LBI in it. It looks like Andre's wrapped up in another issue here. I don't know what's going on in here. So let's try to figure out what app.unfederalreserve.com. Let's try to find out what website we're going to and what actually is LBI. Wow, so the test contracts. So it looks like people put in money into a test contracts that um, the, they are future proofs of concept only and this LBI will not be used in the future. Here it is. Update on 10.31. This won't be used in the future, nor does, it, nor does it do anything more than create a perpetual distribution pool that's shared for devs to help think tank and figure out how to create this new distribution, distribution mechanism. Don't put funds into it. I promise I will create things for you to use your funds for, but this is not it. That is so funny. People are FOMOing in. Now 3 million total value locked on Uniswap. Let's check out Uniswap. Just mind-blowing that we can have unaudited code where developers say that it's test code and people will just ape into it. 2 million TVL, 3 million. Uh, what's the, Everyone's asking about the APY. Um, Wow. See, people are taking this, um, some people take this all different ways. And when it comes to money, it's understandable. Um, Mr. 
Satoshi Shushimoto here. Mr. Cronje seems to think that he hasn't wrecked his reputation enough with EMN. If anyone doesn't know, this was an eminent scandal about a week or two ago that Andre was linked to because he retweeted something S similar to this with test code. People aped into it, put millions of dollars in, and then um, it wasn't actually scheduled to release for a couple of weeks. It's valueless. So he has released LBI and updated that it's valueless after it did a 10x. That's, oh my God. This is where crypto, in my opinion, is quite immature. Um, Mr. Andre Cronje creates code. People ate, ape into it. It goes up 10x. It's not actually value. It, it doesn't have any value, excuse me. Um, another great Twitter follower is Deganomics. Check out Deganomics. Um, and look at this. Stop aching into LBI. He knew this around an hour ago. Great. So we've learned about LBI today. Let's not, if you've learned anything today, don't buy LBI. It's test software. Andre, actually, I won't even say that from Andre. Don't buy LBI. But see, this is where crypto is just very, very invaluable. Um, you don't want to get stuck, obviously, scrolling for hours. But I will have a quick look. Um, Quentin Francois, Young and Investing, great follow. Let's just have a quick look, see what else is going on in the crypto Twitter world today. Great MetaMask, talking about their first designer. I'm not the biggest chart guy, so I'm not the biggest fan of just looking at technical analysis all day. Um, I want to see product updates, software updates, team updates. If anyone doesn't know Michael Saylor, Michael underscore Saylor, he is, actually here it is, MicroStrategy, which is a public company, uh, which is their ticker's MSTR. You can see this right here. Um, he's the founder, chairman, and CEO. He's an MIT alumnus. And he actually just bought about $452 million worth of Bitcoin um, just a couple of weeks ago. He's a great follow. Um, as you can see, Bitcoin is the first digital monetary system capable of storing all the money in the world for every individual corporation, government in a fair and equitable manner without losing any of it. If it's not intrinsically valuable, what is? It's a great question. So if you want some Bitcoin information, Michael Saylor is a great, great way to go. And what's Barry say? I have to be honest. It is hard to see that Bitcoin has what we tend to call intrinsic value. Who says the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey? Oh, Lord. If anyone doesn't know, um, in the UK, I think they've banned cryptocurrency investing um, for UK citizens who are not sophisticated investors and pretty much saying that it is too, it is too advanced for them and pretty much telling the UK people um, what they can and can't invest in. So no wonder the Bank of England governor, Andrew Bailey, says that. Sciatech uh, or Sciatech, I think I've been pronouncing that wrong for a long time. I think it's Sciatech, um, great decentralized storage organization. Please do not put your money into LBI. LBI will not be used in the future. A lot of people trying to help each other out, even though people are FOMOing in. Something about Bancor. Game-changing DeFi product. Great. Looks like it's a new community, Keiko.io. The Deco Dojo is a Web 3.0 powerhouse, especially in the delivery of decentralized technology solutions. I'll give that a follow. We'll see what they'll come out, come out with soon. Bull Run Gravano. Pretty good following, 9,400. Here, it looks like a she. Um, she's always coming in hot. There's a Uniswap pillow now. Bondly Finance. This is Altcoin Sherpa. Altcoin Strip is a great follow on Twitter. Crypto since 2016. Um, looks like he just invested in Bondly Finance, an interesting DEX. What does it say that can be used with popular chat apps and different blockchains? Cool idea, blah, blah, blah. Dot 
partner with Darwinian. To be honest, I'm a little over DEXs and SEXs, um, decentralized exchange and centralized exchanges. Um, I've already got a bit of um, exposure to those organizations. And when new one comes out, unless they're on a brand new blockchain, that's different to Ethereum. Don't know if I'm interested. This one's obviously powered by the DOT network, so kind of interested. I'm not the biggest fan of DOT because I didn't get in on the pre-sale and the private sales, and those guys already made a killing. So Bond's something, actually, I might keep a tab on this one. Um, I probably follow too many accounts, but you know, I like to just keep tabs on as many accounts as I can. A short crypto story. Oh, Lord. There is the story of LBI in about three or four hours. Wow, that's like a four-hour story. Well, that's the LBI story for you, ladies and gentlemen. I think if we went on to Uniswap, for everyone that doesn't know, Uniswap is the most popular DEX in the world, decentralized exchange. You can buy and sell all Ethereum ERC tokens, as well as also provide liquidity and be a liquidity pool or an LP provider. I'm really getting sick of these tokenless updates. I don't care. Tokenless are not a great addition, addition to um, Uniswap, in my opinion. Let's see if we can actually find LBI. Oh, I'd actually have. Well, so because I, this isn't a well-known token, if I wanted to, we could find LBI. Let's do it. Might as well. LBI, ether scan. Let's see if it's here. Usually, I'll you can find the ticker. Let's see. If, well, I'll show you for Uniswap's sake. Let's say that this was Andre's token. I'm not quite sure if it is. This has 10 million LBI. All we do, we come over here. We copy the contract address right here in the portfolio summary. Then I can go back to Uniswap. I can lock this bad boy in. And then what do you know? LBI comes in here. Uh, it gives it a question mark emoji instead of an actual emoji because LBI is useless and valueless. And it's not actually an organization, I don't think. Um, but I could do that. I could add it. Well, actually, I'll remove that. And then I could come here, and then LBI does pop up. So if you ever do find a very early stage coin, that's probably the step you will have to take. And what you'll really want to do is actually go to the website of the organization, which will hopefully, actually, all good organizations will give you a link to their Ether scan. So that's really quickly just on Uniswap. Um, and that's a little short story on Uniswap, or excuse me, on LBI. Oh, we've got mini Blue Kirby. Oh, yeah, because Blue Kirby left us this week, which was very sad. Okay, so I just wanted to show you a little bit of Twitter. That's about enough of Twitter for today. Um, let's actually quickly look. Here it is. So if you ever want information on a coin, you can, uh, an Ethereum coin, you can go to info.uniswap.org. And then you can type in the contract. And actually, let's just, there it is. So here is the contract for liquidity income, they're calling it, LBI. Um, it looks like it's got about $564 million or $1,000 locked up. Um, as you can see here, it's just been, See if I can scroll over here, and this actually looks any bit decent. There it is. There's the story of LBI. It started at 0 0.0043 cents, went all the way up to 0 0.007 cents, and then crashed back down. And now there's probably very little liquidity. There's a bit of liquidity. Still get out. But um, depending on when you bought in, uh, I bet you some people got wrecked here. And actually, this is the pair we really care about. So that's the, the LBI token. Now here, we can also see the LBI ETH pair. So I bet most of the money going into that project, um, incoming, most of that money going into the project um, was probably linked to ETH. So this is the ETH pair that if you wanted to get out of LBI, you would probably have to get back into ETH. Um, and there's actually still a little bit of a liquidity in there. Um, it's interesting to see, it, it would be interesting to see if people are still able to get out. But that's a bit of that's a bit of Uniswap. Um, so come over here to info.uniswap.org. Um, here's the overview of just pretty much all Uniswap stats. You can check out your tokens. And actually, um, this is how I found out. This is one of my new favorite pages. Actually, info.uniswap.org/tokens. This is how I found out about Core, C Vault, 
my one of my new favorite or one of my new very interesting um, experiment investments um, on deflationary yield farming. So I found out about Core because they popped up into the top 10 on liquidity. Actually, no, it wasn't liquidity, excuse me, it was volume. Um, they got they, they popped up to top 10 in, in volume on Uniswap, um, kind of in their first week or in their first five or six days. I think it was very early days for them. So when you have a lot of, a lot of volume um, on Uniswap and you're a coin that's only a week old, it garners a lot of interest. So that's how I found out about Seavault, um, another token that is gener that's actually a fork of Seavault that I want you to know about is, where's Evault? Well, there's Decor, another fork of Seavault. Uh-oh. I'm really hoping um, Evault is doing okay. And rug pull. It's actually called Encore, Ecore. Uh-oh. I was right. Let's see if we have a website. Usually, Evault has quite high volume. They're a very early project as well. Thank God their website's still here. So it looks like we we haven't been rug pulled just yet. It's one of these eight bit websites. Um, not quite sure how hard or easy it is to build an eight bit website, but I think it looks decent. So this is a great page if you want to look at volume on Uniswap. Um, to see which tokens are, are interesting. As you can see, obviously, stable coins are at the top, along with Ether. Everything's built on Ether, or at least everything in Uniswap is at, at the moment. But that it is, Seavault. I haven't really looked at earned DeFi coin yet. Um, we could do that today if you'd like. Actually, let me pop back open the chat, see if anyone's chatted. No chats. Um, what other? Uniswap, obviously, Rap BTC. I haven't even heard of Dracula token. Or I've heard of Doki Doki, um, but we'd have to look at these. And as you can see, here's our story of the day. So story of the day from a fundamental valuation proposition is um, don't dig into tokens just because Andre Cronje is testing prod or testing in prod. There is the liquidity income token. It's still got good bit of value. So you probably still could get out, hopefully. It's just fascinating. All right, let's move on. Um, this is Unfederal Reserve. This was... Let's see if it actually is a Web 3.0 DAP. This was the website that we saw on Twitter this morning. Let's do a quick bit of investigative research to see if this is legit. Unfederal Reserve sounds cool. Um, website looks decent. Um, it kind of looks a little scammy, but let's have a look. Um, it looks like the ticker is ERDSL. Is that a link? Unfederal Reserve, be the next Unfederal Reserve, stake Uniswap LP tokens or Unfederal Reserve LP tokens to request your Unfederal Reserve membership. Wow, that's interesting. So it actually looks like a membership platform um, where I can actually have to, it looks like they call it emitting coins, um, and then I can be a member. And I wonder what I get for being an unreserve, Unfederal Reserve membership. So this is a great example of a fundamental crypto valuation here um, that is obviously in the very early days, we have just barely a website. So pretty much we're just gonna run through every bit of information that we can find um, and take some notes. Um, I ha Usually I do have a Word doc open when I am working um, and just taking notes in the morning and then I can just keep you know, links and resources there. So let's do an Unfederal Reserve quick high-level overview. So let's go across the top here. What are, it looks like a pretty generic um, yield farm for us. We stake LP tokens. We earn ERSDL. Great. And then actually, how many, how many do they have? We've got Unfederal Reserve, uh, Pool, Tether, Circle, Umami, the Dollar, SUSD. Okay, so we've got about 10. Great, so that is our merchant banking liquidity. So that we've changed the name from yield farming to merchant banking liquidity, the merchant banking lobby for pricing and staking coming soon. Interesting. We can go to the Unfederal Reserve website. So this is the web 2.0 application. Um, we can read all about what they're doing here. Unfederal Reserve, E-R-S-D-L. We are merchant bank DeFi. So their website's looking just okay. Um, DeFi today. A 
So it's it's an interesting one. This one I'm kind of on the edge about. It's looking legit. Um, here's tokenomics. How we leverage every Timmons model of entrepreneurship to assess the attractiveness of various ideas. None of this stuff I really care about. This is my job. Um, what is going on here? Their average is the determinant of the idea. Comparable. So they've, they're kind of coming up with a scorecard for tokenomics and they've given themselves a 4.0. Yeah, that doesn't mean much to me. They've got a roadmap, so they are starting in Q4 or 2020, so we're here on the cutting edge of this, uh, this organization. Here's the leadership, so we do have known leadership. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so it's done actually by two, um, one by a valuations guy. He specializes in valuation complex financial instruments, including cryptocurrency loans, interest rate swaps. Very cool. Um, and by also a seasoned Silicon Valley entrepreneur tech technologist. Cool. So look, looks good. We do have public people. That gives me a lot more um, comfort in the organization. They do have a white paper here. I need them to hire engineers though. That's what I want to see. Great. So here's this is an interesting little token. Um, for all, so I can go in here and read all about them, which I can do later on another time. What I wanted to show you is all good organizations at the bottom will have links to all of their ether scans and all of their contracts or smart contracts, excuse me. Also, Discord's a must. Let's follow them on Twitter and see what their Twitter followings look like. This could just take a second to load. Anybody actually watching? No, nope. doesn't matter. So, as we actually, excuse me, we were just saying uh, from our, any organization that we're analyzing in the crypto world, we sh if they're on Ethereum or regardless of what they ha where they're on, they should have links to all their their smart contracts. If they don't, big worry. And here we go. We have the Unfederal Reserve Token ER. E R S E L. God, that, that's a mouthful. I'm just going to take note of that one for later use, and, and I will keep track of this token. Great. So that's legit. So they've created they've created a token. Is pretty much what they've done. Here is the pair. I understand my risk. Wonderful. So it looks like we've got about $169,000 in liquidity. Very little about a volume, but still some volume. ERSDL. Let's see if it's on CoinGecko yet. ERSDL, probably not. No way. So if your coin's not on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap, and it's an Ethereum token that's traded on Uniswap, your best bet is probably, excuse me, over here, is probably to go to Uniswap um, and see what it says. So here is the ERSDL ETH pair. But then if I come down here, let's actually see if we can click into ERSDL only. I understand. Hopefully that's loading, but it's a little worrisome. Um, there it is. So we don't really have, ah, perfect. So unreserved. ERSDL is worth 0 0.001 uh, dollar. Now let's see the historical chart. It's been around since September 23rd, looks like. We started at about 0 0.001 and we've gone up and down and we've stayed at 0 0.001. Now at a 0 0.001 um, token price, I know well, I should know if I go to the token tracker, how many tokens are outstanding, what is the value of this organization before we've even really built a product. Let's see. We've got 252 million ERSDL, 252, 522, 759 times 0.001. There we go. The organization right now is looked is looking like it's about $252,000 worth. No, that's its worth. Now, I want to know its tokenomics. I want to see, I want to know if this thing is going to increase in the future. If it does, I could get diluted. Um, so I do want to know that. 
So I would actually have to go back and do some reading on their website and go back to their about page, read about their tokenomics. As you already saw their token, I'd actually, let's check their white paper real quick. Let's see, we can give this white paper a grade. If anybody's in the chat, I wanna, I wanna see a grade from you um, on how good this white paper is. I could be like Barstool Sports Pizza Man. One bite, everybody knows the rules. We're gonna look at two pages and I should be able to tell you how good a, a white paper is. Oh, a Delaware Corporation. This is looking like a cross between a 10K and a white paper. Actually, yes, it is for distribution. This, these guys are brand new to crypto. Okay, this is a high level reading. Um, this is looking like a 10 to 20 year plan here, not just because it's a long white paper, just because it's looking very wordy. And let's, let's, let's get the abstract here. So all good white papers shouldn't do. Is the synopsis here? So we are building web plat. We are building a web platform for a bona fide business to business lenders with excess capital or cash de deficits resulting from short term funding timing mismatches. For commercial enterprises seeking liquidity, security, and best in class execution, and for anyone interested in data associated with digital assets asset backed lending counterparties, transaction data, and participant performance. Interesting. So they want to do B two B. Um, B2B lending, and they want to become a bona fide platform for business-to-business -business lending. I'm actually quite intrigued now. I'm waiting for someone to mature the cryptocurrency industry. Um, and actually, let's see if we have tokenomics in here. Token sale, allocation, how do I participate? Let's see what they gave the team. Oh, my guess is they went full old school. And they went above 15% on the, the team token distribution. How can you participate? The pool. Here we go. A maximum likely around 400 million tokens are authorized for minting. What did Etherscan just say? 252. Okay, so we have sup token supply inflation that could go from 252 up to 400 million. Let me zoom in. We intend to mint the 400 million ERSDL tokens under the sushi swap dilution methodology. Wow. Approximately 20,000 companies are recorded globally from providing some type of commercial finance. We have not developed in its entirety how various token aggregation levels relate to services allowed, functionality increases, and or production limits. Okay, so them, that's them kicking the can down their own, which is fine. Token economics are hard. Now, it is a dual token system. This is where it's very hard to just get all this information and synthesize it. I should be taking notes on this one, and I may do a video of this one in the future, um, but it is the mission of Residual Token Inc. to support its platform, the residual company pool, RCP. So I'm not quite sure what the RCP, if that's a token or if that's just a pool. Um, Maybe it's just all of the different pools together. So how can I participate? That's what I want to know. Fill it out, receive updates form on the website, and you will see DJ. Great, I'll actually do that. Cool, so that's a new interesting um, ERSDL token um, that you can either watch or not. I'm gonna keep a close eye on this one just because of the two founders. One was evaluations guy, which is my background. And actually, we'll set the invite. Let's have a look at the Discord. The white paper, I give a 7.5 to. A little wordy, but obviously complex topics are wordy. Let's quickly have a look at their Discord. This is taking a while, hurry up. There we go. So it looks like we've got about 18 people online. Didn't, didn't expect um, but a massive um, 
following just yet, but actually there's our man on Federal Reserve, staking farming related bank lobby domain. Awesome. Cool, he's, he's responsive. We've got an active Discord community. I've only got 48 followers, so we'll give them a follow. I don't know if calling themselves Unfederal Reserve is a wise idea, but gotta love it. So what are the 10x staking rewards for another week? The ERSDL ecosystem is the safe harbor protocol and ecosystem for the, for the next gen and more sophisticated DeFi world. Interesting. I've never heard of Alchemy um, FinTech Lending, so I might check them out as well. They're, they're great, they're nice and um, public about who they are and who runs the organization, which is good. Trust is a two, all right, let's move on. Here's Alchemy. End-to-end -end lending platforms, stable FinTech, launch new products, cool. Cool, look, not DeFi, not crypto. Let's get out of there for a second. We're gonna come back to you. Um, let's close a few tabs here. The Unfederal Reserve, interesting project. I'll type that in, Unfederal Reserve. Actually, I'll just go like that. Sweet. So that's the Unfederal Reserve. That's their white paper. Here is the man, the myth, the legend, Howard Krieger, ASA, CEIV. He's actually got a day job as managing director of CBiz Valuation Group, um, and also a day job as CEO of Rizwell. This guy's busy. Good for him. Might connect with the man just for fun. So that's on Federal Reserve, very interesting little project there. Ah, we've got two medium posts from Andre today, so we'll definitely give those two a decent read to see what he's working on. We'll give it a like. Can't even pronounce that. Trachiopteri X. Thank you for the info. We'll have a look at Andre's articles in just a little. Actually, let's just look at the titles, um, and then we'll then we'll keep moving down the line. I want to show you some other resources here that I've got on my tabs. Crypto economies, perpetual liquidity, and IL offsets. Cool. Liquidity delegated governance. There are a few core, few core concepts we see repeating with most new projects, token governance, liquidity provisions, time lock. Interesting. Cool, we'll read those later. Here's CoinGecko's yield farming page. If it, there it is. So you can come in here and actually I think they've got it um, filtered by value locked and you can come in here and check out the value locked and check out your estimated and your APYs um, for the different pools based on what you're staking. Another thing I'm reading this week um, is this quick read by Deegan Tech, Money Changing, Money Lending Part 1. I'm going to get to that today. The API Connectivity Problem um, by Sasa Milik. This is the second post on our series, getting APIs on the blockchain. I really like this, actually, this picture for APIs, because this is, to me, what an API looks like. You've got little cords running from organization to organization. Um, they're all siloed. So I'm going to read that as well. I think that's a bit of good information on fundamentals. This one, um, uh, this should be a good read. Rect.ghost.io, Whale Hunt, SF, SBF, and Blue Kirby. Um, this one I started reading. This is fascinating so far. So definitely have a look at, at rect.ghost.io um, and have a look at the whale hunt because um, it's talking about SBF and his potential over leverage, I think, of the cream finance system. If we come down here, I think it has to do with cream. 
Um, but regardless, and then also the Blueberry discussion as well. So have a look at Rekt. Additionally, I was talking with someone the other day. I, mean, I can actually find the tweet really quickly. I think it's a good one. If go back to my Twitter. If I go to tweets and replies, follow me at Mr. Cartographer underscore crypto cartography. Um, here we go. I read this tweet. Bitcoin miners earn approximately 350 mil, million a month in revenue for their work supporting the Bitcoin network. And I said, great, where do you track this? Because I was curious, where do we get those Bitcoin revenue numbers? And then unsatisfied, uh, also known as at wait and see BTC, um, said mempool.space is a great resource. Add approximately one BT of transaction fees to the 6.25 BTC subsidies and multiply by the number of blocks and the current market price. Welcome to the financial revolution. All right, well, that's quite a little complex bit of math there. Let's see if we can do that. Add one BTC of the transaction fees to the 6.0 TCC subsidy, then multiply by the number of blocks and the current market price. All right, well, I don't know if we'd be doing that, but let's see what he's talking about. He or she. Interesting. So here's all the mempool information on um, pretty much this is comparable to gas for, on the Ethereum network. Here's the mempool size. Oh, uh, okay. So we could get there. This math isn't too difficult. Um, add one BTC transaction fees to the 6.25. Uh, yep, so 6.25 BTC subsidy is what the miners get um, per block. So we could multiply 6.25 BTC multiplied by the number of blocks and the current market price. That makes sense because then we would get how many Bitcoin are mined um, in a given block over time. And then that would give us revenue for the miners. So that does make sense. Thank you for that. There is the mempool. So the mempool is the place to go that transaction goes when they've been unconfirmed. Um, so if we go back to mempool just dot space, we can see that the mempool size is about 18 megabytes, or I think that's megabytes, 16 blocks. The amount of unconfirmed transactions within the mempool, mempool is simply unconfirmed transactions, about 11,000 of them. This leads to the point of front running. Now, there are bots out there that if your transactions in the mempool are public, so from a theoretical and a practical standpoint, actually, there are bots out there that scour the mempools of Ethereum, of Bitcoin, see the transactions that are happening, and then front run them. So while these 11,000 transactions are slowly being confirmed, the bot will quickly execute a high frequency trade, either copy your trade or improve it, um, I assume. And I've never done it. I wish I knew how to front run. And then obviously they will get in before you um, to take advantage of the current price um, and if they, if they did that in front of whales, um, then they'd be able to definitely get in before price changes based on the whale's actions. So that's the mempool, mempool.space. Have a look. Also, unstoppable domains. Have a look at unstoppable domains. Two things you can get. Where are they? You can get... Replace your cryptocurrency address with a human readable name. Um, you can probably see on mine. Mine's MrCartographer.eth. I've actually purchased that. So you can get, um, you can turn your name. Look at this, smile.crypto. Smile so instead of your 0x um, long cryptocurrency address, you can get a smile.crypto or a name.crypto address. Launch uncensorable websites. So smile.com could get seized. Um, if you turned it into smile.crypto, um, it's number one, uncensorable. And number two, you own it. It actually sits in your wallet and as an ERC token. 
Um, so no one can move it around other than you. Puts your domain on content on a decentralized storage network. So they also have an unstoppable browser. So that's great. That's unstoppable domains. Next, what was I looking at? I was actually looking at fetch.ai. Yesterday, I was, I was talking to a friend about um, artificial intelligence. So have a look at fetch.ai if you like artificial intelligence. Here's another Twitter tab. Let's not dive down the rabbit hole again. If you haven't been on TradingView, this is something that I'm not on, but I'm probably going to sign up for today just to start having some of my own. I think I've actually signed up, but I don't use it enough. I actually have my own charts and put in resistant lines with notes of currencies that I look at a lot. Um, and maybe just keep a little better track of the technical analysis, both for you and for myself personally. Um, and then, of course, they've got a lot of different people writing um, about the markets and currencies and stocks and the end of tech stocks. Yeah, right. Maybe in the short term. This is an interesting one, the myth of Warren Buffett and the buy and hold. That's classic. Well, have a look at TradingView, great website. I'm going to get, um, and actually, what's streams mean? Ah, become a streamer. There you go. Funny that. Moving on, have a look at livecharts.co.uk. Um, this is more for currencies, but they actually give live currency strengths. So as you can see, the Aussie dollar and the New Zealand dollar are looking pretty weak right now, um, while others are looking a little healthier. Coin market cap, obviously the competitor to CoinGecko. I use CoinGecko. You can forget about coin market cap, in my opinion. If you're looking for Bitcoin only information, a lot of stats and metrics and measurements um, for Bitcoin, have a look at digitalic.net forward slash BTC. If we come down, um, there's all of these different types of analytics on you. Yeah, I'm looking on the right hand side here. It's a little tough to see with the chat. I'm looking at this blue bar along the left hand side. Um, let's have a look at what, what the beam indicator is. There's all of these different types of Bitcoin charts to analyze the long term charts or the all time charts of Bitcoin. Um, so, as you can see here, this one's pretty self explanatory. We've got a short zone red up here, we've got a long zone down here. Um, this is all the way from 2014 to today. So, it looks like we're just above our long zone, probably still a decent time to purchase, um, given that we've got a lot of room to grow um, upwards. Per they say, I'm not quite sure. The beam indicator is obviously on the left hand side, and it's from a range of negative 0.5 to 1.5. So, don't know too much about that, but could come down here, I hope, and read about it. Other ones, I know you can, but have a look at digitalic.net forward slash BTC. Um, the very first chart on the homepage is the stock to flow model, which was popularized by a man named Plan B on Twitter, good follow on Twitter as well, and Medium. So have a look at the Bitcoin stock to flow model. This is all the way back from 2010. It's pretty much just going through the halvings. This is a color-coded graph based on days until next halving. As you can see, we just had a halving here in 2020 when the blue goes to red. So we had a halving in 2013, blue to red, a halving in 2016, blue to red, and now halving in 2020. Our next halving will be in two th around 2024. Um, and as you can see, this is probably the reason that a lot of people are bullish for Bitcoin come 2021 and 2022 is the stock to flow model. Um, there's a lot of hate for, about the stock to flow model um, on Twitter, which I love. I love the, the arguing and, the, and just the, the banter back and forth of whether stock to flow is accurate, whether it is a good gauge. Um, so as you can see here, right after each halving within the next 18 to 24, actually it's looking around 12 to 18 months, um, at least looks like actually around 12 months for the first cycle for the first BTC bull run from 13 to 14. Looks like this cycle from halving to peak was also around 12 months, a little over 12 months in the 2017 bull run after the second halving. Now for the third halving, um, I think this is going to be elongated, but this is just a hunch that um, 
the, the, the increase in price is going to be less drastic as our supply inflation decrease is less. This first halving pretty much said um, between 2010 and 2013, if you were BTC or Bitcoin miner, you would earn 50 BTC per block. Now, once we hit the first halving from 2013 all the way up until 2017, your BTC miners will only earn 25 BTC per block. Obviously, that would be halved again to 12.5 from 2016 to 2020. And then just in 2020, each Bitcoin miner, if you successfully mine a block, earns 6.25 BTC per block. So our supply, our, our deflation, how do I put this? Our decrease in the miner rewards is getting smaller less volatile therefore i do think the price increase will be less volatile and if it's still if, if the volatility is still similar it'll be over a longer time period and therefore i guess vis-a-vis -vis lower volatility over a shorter time period so i do see this coming out all the way out into um our next halving is 2024 so our next mid cycle could be somewhere in 2021 2022 early probably late 2021 early 2022 is what i'm what I'm eyeing as a good time to start DCAing or dis this dollar cost averaging out of my investments. So I'm certainly hodling until 2021, 2022. Back to Discord. Um, get in as many Discords as you want. Try to try to talk to moderators um, and try to talk to people that are developing um, locations as well. Really great place to kind of just talk to other people in the community as well far better than telegram i don't know what the deal is with telegram i think they're they might have been too attached to a lot of airdrops where if you wanted to participate in the airdrop you had to be part of the telegram um, but I, I just i dislike telegram i think a lot of people do as well here's trading view again here's uniswap again and then also here's encore um encore is the fork of seavolt and actually let's have a look at seavolt because why not Seavolt's got a really cool, really cool website design. Um, I, it's not the, I'm not the biggest stickler on front end design, but I will say from a fundamental valuation standpoint, it's earning about 54% APY right now. If you were staking core wrapped ETH Uni LP tokens, um, I will say though that. When a website has a new, unique, you can tell very well put together front end, that does give me far more um, trust in the pro in in the organization, um, especially with anonymous founders. I do think I think the core has anonymous developers in terms of name, um, first name, last name. We do know who they are by their handles, but it does give me some comfort when it's we just have a really well classy new. Um, or unique front end that that does give me some some comfort as you can see here you and i can go and play solitaire minesweeper right on their front end just very cool little website so that's pretty much it today ladies and gentlemen um doesn't look like we've had any comments hopefully someone was watching and if not um if you did watch this all the way through to the end thank you um like and subscribe obviously we'll do these again come and join me for live streams i'll probably do them early mornings um, pacific time um california time and we can chat and we can just talk about we can go and visit websites and kind of just see what's happening in the crypto world i mean kind of looking at it because crypto changes so much from day to day so today's story was certainly lbi i'm glad we were able to find a short story kind of early in early in the live stream and kind of look at what i do um kind of on a daily basis in terms of for my first 30 minutes my first hour of my day instead of being kind of reactive i want to be proactive and go out and, and find information and, and seek new information and seek knowledge so just a little bit about how i work hopefully you enjoyed it and we will see you next time happy cryptocurrency investing we'll see you later